The Westwinds Breviary is our gift to you during the shelter-in-place order concerning COVID-19. We offer you hope and healing as lovers and followers of Jesus Christ believing these short online liturgies will elevate your spirits and unify your homes. May God bless you richly as you endeavor to renew your mind and love your neighbor. Hey everybody, thanks for coming to church today. Love is the whole law. The entirety of God is a beating heart. Revelation chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. I think the key to correctly understanding the book of Revelation occurs in the first few words. Revelation 1.1 says, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, meaning this is about Jesus. This isn't about the future. This, is, this isn't about the end times. This isn't about the apocalypse. This is about Jesus. So the question for us as we try and understand the book of Revelation is, what does this tell us about Jesus. This is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, in Greek, that, that preposition can also mean uh, about. So this is a revelation of Jesus Christ, meaning G Jesus delivered it himself. This is the revelation from Jesus Christ. That's also a meaning, meaning, meaning you know, Jesus is the one speaking it. And this is a revelation concerning or about Jesus Christ. Everything, beginning and end. It's all, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And people go, well, yeah, but there's stuff in there about you know, Gog and Magog, and maybe that's Russia, and maybe that's China, and maybe you're smoking crack. Maybe you should just knock it off and go back to the beginning where the guy tells you what the book is about. No, 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 you don't understand, Dave. We're living in the end times. Yeah, they've been living in the end times like for roughly 2,000 years. So how much endier do you feel now? I'll wait. Because maybe the rapture will happen while you're telling me I'm wrong. Didn't did it. Uh, I know, I know. Now listen, the reason I'm poking just a little bit is not because I don't think the scripture is holy. I think the scripture is very holy because the scripture points to Jesus. Jesus, that is the whole point. He is the sum and the story of our salvation, the source and the substance of human being and human becoming. He's the alpha and the omega, the holy one of God, the anointed one of ancient Israel, savior of you and me. So, so the more you speculate about something other than Jesus, the more you are deliberately going against the scripture and looking for a new revelation. That's total crock. Knock it off. What's the matter with you, you imaginary internet people? I'm really just saying all this to a tiny little screen in my church because I cannot abide the fact that anyone would look for a new revelation other than Jesus. He is the revelation. Him. The whole revelation of God is Christ. The entirety of the law is love. And love is self-sacrifice. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's the revelation. That's the revelation. God is love. And love willingly endures suffering for the sake of others. That's why 1 John says, greater love has no man than this, that he would lay down his life for our brothers. Christ died for us. We ought to have the same kind of love for everybody else. That's not a love that fantasizes about killing. That's a love that fantasizes about taking one for the team. That's not a love eager to mete out justice and retribution and punishment. That's a love that says, those people deserve to be punished. They did some wrong stuff, but I'm gonna stand in the gap and advocate for them. That's Love. That's love. And then John goes on to say, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, which say what? Blessed is the one who proclaims the faithfulness of God, the supremacy of love, and the centrality of Jesus Christ. I'm blessed. Just want you to know. If you want to know what blessing looks like, it looks like these veins in my neck. It looks like this gray beard. It looks like you and me elevating and celebrating Jesus. That's, that's what blessing is looks like. Blessed is the one who hears this prophecy, which you know what I mean, you meditate on. You, you, do you hear what I'm saying? I mean, you're blessed if you are. I mean, if you get it, if you really get it, that this is about Jesus, all of it, this present moment, this 
time of tribulation, this season of stress and pressure. It's, it's about Jesus. It's about Jesus winning out inside of you. It's not about speculation. It's about God in you. It's about Christ blossoming in you. If, if you can hear me on that, if you can hear that, you're blessed. Blessed is the one who reads it out loud. Blessed is the one who hears it. And blessed is the one who keeps it. Now you got to apply it. Keeping it means you got to love others the way Christ loved you. You got to learn to die to yourself. You got to learn, and it's so hard. I don't want to die to myself. I want to live. But, but whoever wants to keep his life must lose it. Somebody smart said that once, and I happen to like him a whole lot. So, friends, let us begin every day with thoughts of elevating Christ. Let us begin every devotion with thoughts of elevating Christ. And please, for the love of all that is good and holy, when we read the book of Revelation, don't forget, it's about him. It's about the God who loved the world so much that he was willing to die to save it. But I admit I've been put away A couple of hundred times I hear a voice in the baby's breath I see it in your smile So I'll give this world my best blank stare to know what I need to find I find peace in your arms So I wave bye-bye Before these troubles take me down Swing low, sweet chariot Root me on, I'm not done yet I know there's a crown Sing for my life Oh, joy has come You promised me a place Give me shelter, give me grace that's what I had, it's what I found. Every day has enough trouble of its own. Help me not worry about lots of things. Shake the soul and give this world a taste Of the joy that you bring Hold me tight through the storm oh. So I wave bye-bye Before these troubles take me down Swing low, sweet chariot Root me on, I'm not done yet I know there's a crown Sing for my life Oh, joy has come Promised me a place, give me shelter, give me grace. That's what I have, it's time that I found.
Uh, I'm going to teach you a kind of bodily prayer known as a palms up, palms down prayer. It's really simple. There's no big trick to it. It's just, it's just a helpful way for us to sort of experience prayer uh, at another level with God. And it's a prayer of confession. So you begin by placing your hands down. And you think of all the things that in your life you're, you're trying to push out. All the, the negativity, the guck, the sin. You're, you're literally pressing it down your body while you pray. And so you might pray and say, Lord, today I'm, I'm, I'm getting rid of my bitterness, of my resentment, of my hate, of my frustration. I'm getting rid of those old injuries that I keep playing over and over and over in, again in my mind. I'm getting rid of my need for validation or approval from others. I'm getting, I'm getting rid of my need to be right all the time. I'm just, I'm pushing these things out, Lord. And then as you come to the end of the things that you'd like to confess, you turn your palms up in a posture of surrender. And you say, Lord, instead of all that garbage, I'm inviting your Holy Spirit to pour into me to funnel into my heart and to rejuvenate me, to, to sanctify me by the power and the truth of who you are. Grace and peace, everyone. We pray that God continues to refresh your spirit and restore your soul. If you want to know the essence of the divine, then love your neighbor, lay down your life to save theirs. The truth is, God is Christ-like. Thanks for being here, everybody. We love you very much, and we'll see you tonight.